Hey everyone, this is McKnightster, and today we'll be exploring a variety of different features and what might be the best Minecraft Bedrock technical pack out there. This is a resource pack that doesn't disable any achievements as it doesn't alter any of the game's mechanics like an add-on would. It simply changes the rendering of players armor stands, allowing you to see many things that would normally be invisible in the world. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out some of these features. Alrighty guys, I forgot to mention this in the intro. This pack was created by Mad Hatter. You can find the links to his YouTube channel and his GitHub repository down in the description below. Please go ahead, check them out. I would also like to express my gratitude to all the other contributors of this pack as this has been a community pack and not just a pack that was developed by Mad Hatter himself. But let's go ahead and check out some of these features. Um, these are the beginning features of this pack and we'll slowly go more into more advanced things throughout the video. So the first two items you'll need is a rocket and a shell. These are very important. When I go ahead and put the rocket in my inventory, as you can see, we now have these chunk borders that show up everywhere. Um, they each have their directions, north, oh, north, west, east, and south, as you can see. Each of these lines is a two block gap. So a chunk is 16 by 16. So if we were to go down in here, I could start laying out a chunk as you can see. Now this is just for basic chunks. This is very good for redstone, um, any sort of mob farms, contraptions, you'll be able to use this. That should greatly help your builds and make sure everything is running smoothly, especially if you need to build something within simulation chunks. The next item we'll be do checking out here. Oh, you cannot mean to grab fences we'll go ahead and take this out so go ahead and click it in then click it click it again to turn it off next is the nautilus shell not a lot of people know that you could actually put this in your offhand this may be a bedrock exclusive feature but when you put this in here as you can see the the chunks still show up but as you can see there's these green chunks that are outlined everywhere these are slime chunks so if you want to build a slime farm anywhere as you can see we have a double slime chunk farm right here um, you look down, you can see where it's at. And if you fly around, you can just keep looking. Maybe you're trying to build a super farm and you need four chunks. Um, it will show you where these chunks are located, which is actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and move on to some more advanced features. Alrighty guys, so we will be checking out the first run of features. Um, every feature from now on will require the armor stand, only the rocket and the Nautilus shell. It's the player items. Um, but yeah, so first thing you want to do is place on an armor stand here. Of course, my game is going to pause. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and place oak planks. When you do this, this crazy thing will show up. This is the simulated chunk for render distance. As you can see right here, anything past that, it starts to get a little wonky. So I think six, eight, 10, and 12 go up from 128 to 128 down. And then it's the ticking area all the way down. But this will show where players are able to spawn within this area, as you can see. To disable it, you'll just go ahead and take the block out. The next thing we'll be checking out is the simulated chunks or the ticking distance as itself. Uh, Matt Hatter said it in one of his videos, stick rhymes with tick. It does. So that's a good reference. There will be a wiki linked to down in the description below which is also his GitHub repository that you can go ahead and check out for more useful items and features um, to remember everything. So if we place this stick down here, as you can see, we actually have the different types of simulated different or distances. Well, as you can see, we still have a compass, which is useful. This is the four chunk taking distance. This is default. So everything in this area will be loaded. Anything outside of that will not be loaded. Um, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Twelve is the max distance of simulated chunks, as you can see, and it gets pretty huge. The next useful item that I would like to show you all is density. Density is very good for mob farms, as you can see. It is very bright, so I apologize for blinding you. But this area, the game basically checks. Am I able to spawn a mob here? Or is there that mob already here? 
or is there too many mobs to spawn on that mob here um the game's just doing a bunch of calculations to see if it can spawn that mob there's too many mobs that won't spawn that mob but this is it so you can use this to line up farms of that nature and things like that but yeah that's pretty much it of this feature um let's go ahead and get into more advanced stuff already guys so now we'll go ahead and start talking about uh villages and pillages um first thing you'll need to do is place a bed down place an armor stand on the pillow and next thing you'll place a poppy this will show the village's central area as you can see the pink box is anywhere an iron golem will be able to spawn this is great for our iron farms things of that nature the yellow box as you can see is anywhere a uh, a raid will start so the minute you enter in here in this yellow box a raid will happen pink is where iron golems start the next thing i'll show you is with the crossbow this has to do with raids as you can see it shows different colors here the terrain kind of is blocking out the other ones but this little blue green area is for vindicators these are the guys with the axes if there's a, a villager in this area those guys will immediately start targeting them as they can see them this pur purple slash pink area here is for pillagers and ravengers um so they can see within the teal and the pink area um which is a bigger radius as you can see and then the orange slash red area is for evokers as they have the max amount of distance that they can find a villager um yeah so this is great if you want to design like a special funky looking like raid farm um things of that nature or just protecting your village in general but now let's go ahead and find a pillager outpost already guys so we are here at a pillager outpost um this feature is probably one of my favorite features here so what we want to do is we want to find where the pillagers spawn especially if you're building a nice raid farm so we'll go ahead and walk inside the door we need to find the middle of the pillager outpost which is right here you can basically just line them up with these blocks right here um as you can see orientation is very important on this so just walk in the door place it like this you want to make it so the armor stand looks like it's walking out next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and place an illager banner as you can see we have some colors that show up here this specific outpost has two spawning spots now you may be wondering you see a little green pixel here this is the i believe northwest corner here where this is the actual area corner that they will spawn in here so the pillagers will spawn here and here which is great um some pillager outposts have one spawning spot if they're old some of them have four i believe this resource pack um automatically adjusts the spawning spot like i said make sure the orientation is perfect this is the proper orientation if you don't have it let's say you were to place it like this as you can see it does not work you place it sideways you get things messed up so please make sure you are using the proper orientation let's go ahead and move on to our next feature already guys the next cool thing about this resource pack is it also works for witch huts so if we go ahead and go in here and we go ahead and place the armor stand in here and we place the sugar as you can see i actually placed it right where which is supposed to spawn it will spawn in this area like i said this is super grateful for witch farms you know exactly where these witches will be spawning they don't spawn in a specific corner which is great so use that as future reference here but they will be spawning right here alrighty guys so now we are at a ocean monument this is also great for guardian farms so this one works a little bit differently as you can see most monuments have this little um top part that you can normally see anywhere in this little four by four go ahead and place an armor stand it doesn't matter which direction i'm just going to place it like that for now place a prismarine shard in it and as you can see you can see every individual spot 
where a guardian will be spawning. Now, one thing I found out that's actually pretty cool is if you actually place more of these, the greener the color is. So if you need a color that's lighter for you, go ahead and go ahead and do that. Like I said, never place um, an armor skin diagonal. It does work for in this case, but all the other features, it does not. Alrighty guys, now we'll be hopping into more of the crop slash farming range. So place your armor stand like normal. And if you go ahead and place a water bucket here, you will see the max distance how one water source, which is right where the armor stand is, can hydrate crops. Any crops outside of here will start to not get water and then will eventually die. One thing that's super cool too, is if you go ahead and place sugar cane, you get this cool little feature here and this shows the best layout for sugarcane. So the more sugarcane to water ratio, um, this is the best per chunk that you could do. Um, it's more efficient than just running lines and things like that. Um, this is also great if you wanna make an automatic uh, sugarcane farm with like a slime machine, just have it mowed through and just keep it like this. Alrighty guys, the next feature we'll be looking into, it has to do with mob AI. So first thing we want to do is place down our armor stand. And next is a sea turtle egg. This will show the aggro distance of uh, pigmen and zombies. Um, if they get inside the circle, they will target the egg if it was right here, which is pretty cool. Next thing is the gunpowder. This is like the uh, scared range. So if you were to place a cat or a dog right there, um, any mobs within this yellow area that are right here will be scared out into the orange area. So if you have a cat and a creepers right here, it will come outside here. Same thing with a dog and skeletons. You can use this to make funny farms. Um, if you want to sort different mobs to different areas, things of that nature. Next thing we'll go ahead and talk about is Enderman. So let's go ahead and head to the end. Alrighty guys, now that we are at the end, we want to go ahead and place an ender pearl in the armor stand. As you can see, we have two things that show up. We have a cyan color and then we have a purple box. The cyan circle is anywhere an enderman can detect an endermite and hunt the endermite down. That's why most people tend to throw their end farms out in the void because their detection radius is super high. Now, the purple box, if you were to make an enderman teleport, um, whether that means you attacking it, staring at it, things of that nature. It will only go somewhere inside this purple box. It will never go outside this purple box. Alrighty guys, we are down to the final couple features here, um, which are more of mis miscellaneous type features. First thing, armor stand and torch will provide a light radius here. Anything within the yellow, mobs will not spawn. Now. You'll see this darker yellow here. Um, you'll see this darker yellow here. Um, if it's flat surface, mobs will not spawn. But if it goes down into this little like one block difference, mobs will be able to spawn. So that's just a little warning color there. Next thing we have is the spider area. So if you are building a mobs farm, you need to place down buttons or slabs or something of that nature to prevent spiders from spawning if you wish to do so. This is the best feature within like a one chunk radius as you can see. Next thing we have, which is our final feature here. So let's say this is a full and function dungeon. We place the armor stand down and we place a string. This area out here, the purple, is anywhere where that spawner will start to begin spawning mobs. This blue here is where the mobs will spawn and then you have your little chunk radius here on um, this gives you good insight if you want to make yourself a custom mob spawner things of that nature it's just very informative this is what this pack is but that is the last feature i have to show y'all i hope you guys enjoyed the video a big shout out to mad hatter and everyone who has contributed once again this will be worthy i think i'm gonna put this in my survival world as soon as possible like i said it doesn't get rid of achievements go ahead and check out his content 
go ahead and leave me a sub down below too um let's see if we can get to 2000 subs it says that only 1.98 percent of people here are subbed to my channel let's kind of close that gap a little bit but i hope you guys enjoy the video please like and subscribe as you see fit and i'll catch you all on the next one goodbye